Hey, this week we're going to be talking about, uh, instead of the great I am, and since I talked about the third uh, sermon in that series last week, I didn't know at the time it was going to be a third, uh, third one in that series, uh, but I think it's necessary. I wanted to cover in a sermon the results of Jesus saying, um, I am the bread of life. What took, what took place? Yes, there was conflict with some of the disciples. Some of the disciples left. You have Peter's confession and then the prediction of Judas' rejection of Jesus as Messiah. So I wanted to cover those things. But then I, I had mentioned uh, to the congregation, and if you're a member of Troy First Baptist and, and you were at church or you heard it online, that I would be talking about some personal things this week of a confirmation. And what that has to do with is prayer. And so this week we're going to be looking at the question, does God answer prayer? Um, if so, does he answer all our prayers? Um, and so to begin that, and, and there's a lot of questions. Usually when someone asks, um, does God answer prayer? What they're really asking is, does God answer in the affirmative when we pray? Um, the better question, I think, is, does God hear us when we pray? And uh, the answer to that is in a, in a is a resounding yes throughout Scripture, that God hears the prayers of His people. Does He hear the prayers of sinners? Well, He must have heard my prayer as a sinner when I called out as a child uh, to be saved and, and prayed to receive Jesus Christ. He heard that prayer. And I think God does hear the prayer of the sinner who cries out for salvation. But the Scriptures makes it clear that one cannot presume upon the grace of God in prayer. It is the... It is our relationship with Jesus Christ, our faith in Him, that brings us into the presence of God and the spirits residing in us that enables us to say, Abba, Father. To use that term of endearment, that Aramaic term of endearment, that means uh, Daddy. Uh, that's not crass and that's not rude. I know it sounds harsh to, uh, if you grew up in the church, in the Southern Baptist Church like I did, uh, then to say of God, Daddy, is almost uh, to get close to blasphemy. Um, but according to the New Testament and according to Jesus, uh, it is the Spirit that enables us to have that intimate relationship with God to be able to call Him not just Father, but Daddy, that intimate term that little children would call their fathers. So, as we look at the, as I said, the better question and the question that people usually are asking is, does God answer prayer in the affirmative? Uh, but I think the better question to ask is, does God hear our prayers? And yes, the scriptures are clear from beginning to end. God hears prayers. Uh, and it certainly hears the prayers of his people. Now, when we come to answering prayer, does God hear our prayers? Yes. Does God answer our prayers? Absolutely. But not always in the affirmative. Sometimes there is a, a, a yes, a very definite yes, and that's what I'm going to be talking about on either Thursday or Friday. I'm not sure that I'll be doing one every day, but, uh, but the last one that I do this week about prayer will be about my own personal experience um, this past week while I was on vacation. And I'll share that because it is, it is a fascinating piece of scripture that God uh, gave to me that day. Uh, specific answer to prayer. Uh, what I want to talk about tonight, though, is yes, God does answer prayer. He answers yes. Uh, other times he answers no. Um, we'll look at examples of that. We're going to look at examples of God answering prayer yes. We're going to look at biblical examples of God answering prayer no. And then we're going to look at the other, I think there are three. Uh, there is the, the third one, which is no but. Um, there's yes, there's no. And then there's no but, which implies I've got something better for you. No but, I'm giving you this instead. No but, uh, wait a little while and then it'll be an affirmative. So there's all different kinds of ways we can look at that. And so we'll be looking at that one as well. Uh, so what I wanted to do tonight, though, is to give us the assurance that, yes, God does answer, hear and answer our prayers. A couple of Psalms, Psalm 65 two, David is uh, talking about coming before God in the temple and he says, O thou who dost hear prayer. So God hears prayer. To thee all flesh comes. 
eventually, yes, all people will be before God in some way or another. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We'll all be before the Holy One of God. We'll be before God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But what about in prayer? Does, does all flesh, I think all flesh does come to God, but maybe not always coming in prayer. And I don't think that's what David is implying. David is implying that, that if you come to God, there's only one God to come to, no matter who you are. So all flesh, if you're going to come to God, must come to this God, uh, the God who hears prayer. There is no other God to hear prayer. So if you want your prayer answered, you want the God to hear your prayer, this is the only God that's open for business. Uh, you All flesh must come to this God. And in Psalm 66, 19, which we'll, we'll come to uh, when we look at uh, probably tomorrow, we talk about, okay, God does hear and answer our prayers, but is there a time when God won't hear a prayer? Is there a circumstance? And so this Psalm 66 does speak of that, but uh, David's assurance was in verse 19, but truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of, of my prayer. That, so in both of those psalms, it is assured to us that God is the one who hears prayer. God hears specific prayers, and he is attentive to prayers. And then in the New Testament, in one of my favorite passages in 1 John uh, 5, verse 13, these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, who believe in Jesus in his name, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence or the boldness which we have before Jesus. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we are knowing that we have the request which we have asked from him. So, yes, does God hear prayer? Absolutely, the scripture is clear. Does God answer prayer? Absolutely, a resounding yes again. But it's not always that the answer that he gives us is yes. Sometimes it's yes. Sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's no, but. And then there is that verse that we just did where we have a confidence. We can have a confidence that um, this is the confidence we have before him, that if we ask anything according to the will of Jesus. So it must be according to the will of God that our prayers come before him, that we can be assured that we'll have our request. So um, another thing that I want to make clear before I close this out, yes, does God hear prayer? Absolutely. Does he answer prayer? Absolutely. Condition, uh, to how can we have the confidence that we can know that we will have what we have asked of God when we ask it according to his will? Um, so God will be gracious in giving us what is good for us, what is in his will for us. How do we know what his will is for us? Well, generally we know because we read the scripture. Um, why should God, I remember Adrian Rogers saying, why should God give us more specific will if we're not listening to his will for us in the word which he has already given us? So to know the will of God, first of all, we go to scripture to know the will of God. And then secondly, specifically, I think, uh, like for example, if I'm seeking God's will concerning uh, a, a course of life or a decision that I'm making, there uh, you ask and you look for the Spirit's guidance, but nine times out of ten, the Spirit's going to take you to the Word of God to reveal that to you, as it did to me uh, this past week. So in closing, um, I think we get confused about prayer, and we think that the main thing about prayer is asking for stuff or asking that God would intervene, or those kind of things. The most important aspect of prayer, and I think we neglect this far too often, is merely communing with God. As David said, uh, and I can't remember the psalm right off the top of my head, that he would delight in, in, in the presence of God. He would awake in the morning and delight in the presence of God and, and sing praises to God. And that's a great thing that we set I don't know when your prayer time is. Mine is usually in the evening, um, sometimes in the morning. Actually, I try to be in prayer all day long, but specifically devotion time, reading the Bible. Uh, most of the time I do that at night, although here lately, the past few weeks, I've been reading in the morning and having my prayer time then. But David said, and the thing is, whenever your devotion time is, whenever your prayer time is, it's great to do this in the morning, to awaken and immediately come into the presence of God to commune with him, to talk with him, to express to him 
our love and to receive from him his love back and to open up ourselves to him for the day. Lord, have your will in my life today. Be glorified in me today. Those kind of things. And to open our hands to receive what he has for us to receive and be a, a, a accepting of his will for us this day and to let him guide and direct us. And so primarily that's what prayer is, is talking with God, communicating with him, having that relationship where we communicate. So while we are going to be talking about a specific kind of prayer, asking God to intervene, asking God for things, uh, let's not forget in the midst of that that the most important part of prayer is just being with God and enjoying Him, praising Him, having that communion, that relationship with Him, uh, and communicating that is the main thing. Well, listen, hey, I pray that you know that. I pray that you have that prayer time. I hope that you do because God loves you. He has given His Son that you might have eternal life, forgiveness of sin, and joy indescribable right here and right now. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.